And uh, welcome back to the Ails and Fails Twitch stream with your host, Alewolf. Today, another Thursday afternoon with our persistent campaign through the world of Eorzea and uh, Final Fantasy XIV as I make my way through the first few levels with an Arcanist. Uh, here with us, we have usual uh, friend of the stream, John. John, hello, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, glad to be back after a long hiatus. Well, there was uh, there was several discussions about whether or not we should bring you back, and fortunately, you still made it past fifty-one percent of the vote. So, uh, yeah, welcome back. Yeah, that's good. I guess I guess the board, most of the board, or a good portion of the board, wasn't having it, but uh, I guess somebody overruled the vote. That's good. I can only assume that you bribed them. So um, today, let's uh, let's do our usual thing and just talk about what we are serving at the at the bar today. I've got a velvet couch with me, which is a uh, an oatmeal stout. So the reason why that is significant is because most beers are generally made of barley. Uh, oatmeal stouts, as a category, are generally made with oats as their base uh, grain. And so as you can see there, it's a very robust dark color. Oatmeal stouts, uh, uh, in terms of difference between that and other stouts, are very crisp. They're very light bodied. They almost have the same consistency as Coca-Cola. Um, and their flavor, of course, is very oaty. So if you have oatmeal in your breakfast, it, it might give you a bit of a shock to learn that it does have some of those same notes with us. Uh, I found Velvet Couch during my trip to Santa Rosa, which happened very recently. If you follow my Instagram, uh, it was a brewery called uh, Shady Oak, which I quite liked. They got a nice selection of arcade games there. Very open space, and it's also got a uh, space for food trucks. So if you're ever in the area, Santa Rosa, California, I recommend you visit uh, Shady Oak. All that being said, bang an ale, Ken. Again, very crisp, very strong oat flavor forward. Yeah, yeah, quite a good, quite a good drink. Have you ever been to Santa Rosa before, John? Can't say that I have, no, but it sounds wonderful. Would you like to go? Potentially. There might be some other places I'd rather go first. Maybe. The ability to travel. Yeah, maybe if we ever meet in person, uh, we can go on a road trip there. Maybe we could. Maybe if we did meet in person for the very first time. Indeed. Uh, let's see if we can go ahead and jump into the game. I think I need to activate my game capture. And so I definitely need to capture my game over here. And that didn't do it. There we go. Okay, so let me go ahead and hop on. And foolishly, I grabbed my Nintendo Switch controller. That doesn't make sense. Oh no, 21 extra players in the queue. Are you already in? Uh, indeed I am, yes. So what are we doing? Are we questing or are we trying uh, our shot at, at the daily roulette? Well, ideally we would uh, keep questing so that we can move into the story, but if you'd like, um, or what I would suggest at least, is taking... Uh, we can take an intermission to do a dungeon if the story quest doesn't ask us to go into a dungeon, and then we can just resume questing. That's kind of, that's kind of my idea. What do you think? Uh, that, that's fine. So then on, on with the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe right before you have to, maybe like a half hour before you have to take off, we can switch over to do the daily dungeon if we haven't run into any dungeons yet. So in 40, 39 minutes. Uh huh? So in 39 minutes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's I guess. my Cinderella time. All right. Makes sense. 
Uh, so I'm here in uh, uh, Limsa Lominsa. What's here? What's the name of this location? Wormwind. Let's see. What is the current main scenario? Call of the Desert. Desert, okay. According to Mio, the adventurer's guild and all that is recruiting people for an undisclosed task. You can learn more by speaking to Mo Mobody, the proprietress of the quicksand. Okay, so I have to go to all that, it seems. Mm -hmm. Sailor teleport. Back in my favorite city of Alda. Do you not feel like the first few uh, piano strokes of the theme in Alda just scream nostalgia? Uh, personally, I can't say I felt that. Maybe, maybe you've had a very specific experience with all the music or all the like music, for you to think it's um nostalgia. That's fair. I guess it probably evokes different things in different people. So I do apologize for not uh, calling the uh, calling forth the gaming last week. I happened to be away. Uh, what have you been up to these past two weeks, or what sort of media have you been consuming? Uh, I would say I've been pretty active. Um, one of the pieces of media that I've consumed lately that has been that was actually pretty good was uh, I picked up an audiobook uh, called All Systems Red. And so this is part of a series called the is it the Murderbot Diaries? I think that's what it's called. A very interesting series. It's sci-fi. So what, uh, what is what is the theme of the story, or what, what's the what's the gist of the plot? Um, so <clears throat> I definitely suck at synopsis. So no, well I, I'll what, judge you. That's fine. I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to look one up because I'm pretty sure somebody else does a better job at explaining this than I do. Uh, so, let's see... Uh, in a corporate-dominated spacefaring future, planetary missions must be approved and supplied by the company. Exploratory teams are accompanied by company, supplied security androids for their own safety. Uh, but in a society where contracts are awarded to the lowest bidder, safety isn't a primary concern. On a distant planet, a team of scientists are conducting Surface tests shattered by their company-supplied droid, a self-aware sec unit that is hacked into its own governor module and refers to itself, though never out loud, as Murderbot. Uh, scornful of humans, all it really wants is to be left alone long enough to figure out who it is. Uh, but when a neighboring mission goes dark, it's up to the scientists and their Murderbot to get to the truth. That's a really good synopsis, actually. Sounds like a very thick plot. Um, I can't say I caught most of that, but it sounds uh, futuristic, involving robots and very complex. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's actually a pretty short read compared to a lot of like science fiction, because I don't know if you've read a lot of science fiction before, but typically the way that the genre is, it's just very long, very wordy, uh, and they kind of go a lot into the world building. But this one, this it had interesting world building, but uh, primarily the focus was just on the character, on the main character. Uh, it's said it's basically told in first person from the point of view of murder bots which is a sentient ai um, and so yeah it's it's very interesting to see how he kind of develops and uh, it's it's also kind of interesting to kind of experience what an, a rogue ai uh you know would go through in a first person if that rogue ai just happened to be kind of like this depressed and socially anxious uh sentient being i guess mm-hmm <clears throat> yeah, it's a good read. I would have definitely recommend that. Well, I, I, I kind of just think that uh, by calling someone or denominating it a murder bot, you are uh, restricting its uh, primary function to uh, fit its uh, cognomen. Yeah, it actually calls itself murder bot. It's, it's not something that is uh, so, that other people call it. How interesting. How did you come about this piece of media? Uh, somebody recommended it to me. Um, I typically like reading... Um, I like reading epic fantasy. So... Uh, for some reason in the literature world, epic fantasy and science fiction are actually really close really closely intertwined, like almost like the people who like, uh, you know, epic fantasy also like 90% of the time tend to like science fiction. So it was just recommended to me and I actually did like it. And I think I like science fiction somewhat. Like I like watching some science fiction shows every once in a while. Well, this curiosity you point out, this connection between uh, fantasy and uh, science fiction was uh... The original connection was made in the first uh, first or second Thor movie, if you don't recall, because if you recall that scene where uh, J Jane Foster, what was her name? It's Natalie Portman's character. Mm -hmm. Jane, Jane, okay. Jane something or other. She was confused by the science of the Thor world, and then Thor was just like, what you know, what you know as magic in your world is science in mine. And that was the first time that sci-fi was connected to magic. What a strange connection, but I see it. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, there things that we don't understand, we call magic, but they are actually uh, science to a to the civilization that developed it. Okay, so I'm talking to a doctor who looks like a very young, mustachioed person. I think uh, somebody once said that uh, sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, and I think there is some truth to that. Was it Thor? Could Thor have said that? No, it, was not. it wasn't Thor. Okay. Was it Chris, Chris Hemsworth? Yeah, it may have been him. Okay. He was just having a cast interview, one of his other movies. He was like, fun fact. Uh, and then he said what you said. Yes, that's exactly what happened. Okay, the Copper Bell Mines are in Western Thalash Thalashian. In what quest are you in? I am in Call of the Desert. 
Although I do also have a class quest. Okay, into a copper hell painted mesa. Giants. Have you gotten your next um, job quest yet? Uh, I don't actually know. Uh, so I need to speak to Stone Torch before Copper Bell Mines. Uh, I'm assuming that the uh, j next job quest is somewhere under my current main scenario quest. I believe that's how it's shown up in the past. Yes, that's correct. So, I, I haven't got it. I haven't got it. Pins from No, but you're, you're able to do it, right? If it shows up under your main scenario quest, that means that you are eligible to accept it. Oh, I see. It looks like I have to go to Western Galassian. As well, you're making your trek. Um, I guess I was rude and I didn't ask you if you had consumed any good media since we last spoke. Well, I am still watching uh, that Korean show, uh, Everyone is Dead, or All of Us Are Dead. I did mention it to you last, last we spoke, and uh, it's interesting, but I can see that the world is expanding. And while that's fine and it makes sense, I can't... I, I, like I said, the thing that allured me to it was the fact that it was very much focusing on this high, high school setting with these high school kids. Mm -hmm. uh, so still uh, very, very intense uh, moments. Lots of questioning as to whether or not uh, their actions are justified. There's been more than one instance where somebody in the main group gets uh gets a zombie bite and they question what to do about it and sometimes it's a very functional response as in we are abandoning this person but other times it's a uh, it's a bit more of a we will take care of it if it happens because this person is my friend and so it uh, it never fails to tug at the heartstrings, as they say. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of other media, hmm. I'd like to say there's. Well, I'm still watching One Piece, of course. I did very recently start watching B Stars. Have you heard about that? I have heard about that show, and it seems like it has an interesting premise. Yeah, so the premise is that uh, the world in which it throws you in is uh, inhabited by these uh, human-like uh, beasts, mostly mammals. I guess there's some birds, and they're all roughly human-sized. And so they... Uh, uh, specifically, it places you in a high school world and the protagonist is this young man known as Lagoshi, who is actually a wolf. And in this world, uh, people are largely divided between um, carnivores and herbivores. So it's kind of like the show Zootopia, if you ever saw that movie. 
Did you ever see that movie? I didn't, but I do know what you're talking about. Yeah, so, um, first of all, you should watch Zootopia, but, um, yeah, it, uh, he's this kind of individual that, um, doesn't want to play the stereotypical carnivore, and he kind of just, like, everywhere he goes, even though he's kind of tall and strong, he, he just pretends to be, he pretend he just slouches and pretends to be feeble, and, uh, mm -hmm. very sympathetic, but at the same time, he's constantly struggling with this feeling of having to actually embody that carnivore that he is and fight off um, his his nature and just his his hunger. And it very much uh, uh, juxtaposes his feeling to be, his necessity to be a carnivore against the idea of growing up and going through puberty and having uh, other carnal desires, if you will. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I actually like it a lot. I've only seen uh, two episodes so far, but I'm, I'm very captivated by it. It's interesting that you mentioned uh, it's kind of also like a hitting puberty sort of story because uh, I think it's, I think Disney recently did the uh, did the whole hitting puberty and then turning into a an animal sort of thing with turning red just recently so i wonder if that kind of if that connection just makes sense in some kind of in some kind of visceral visceral inner inside part of us well it's about striking while the iron's hot i i am sure that a lot of the media that's presented and new these days um just cover that sort of sentiment simply because it wasn't common to have it at, in the forefront as as it is now and people are hungry to explore these feelings whether you are younger or older like yours truly it's it's interesting to just navigate these um, uh, propensities uh, and, and kind of uh, you know explore them if you will Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll we'll see where it goes, but certainly uh, I, I would suggest uh, if you are interested. Uh, it sounds like it sounds like a goofy premise from one perspective, but it is also just very serious from others. Okay, the copper belt mines are now accessible. It's part of the duty finder. So I guess we've got a new dungeon in our midst. Let me know when you, it, you are available to uh, enter it. Yeah, let me focus on continuing and um, yeah, basically continuing the main story quest because I was kind of wrapped up in conversation and also fixing my UI that kind of I'm still at call of the desert. So hopefully I'm not too far behind. Well, that's fine. I should probably check my inventory. I'm sure I got some fancy new duds last time, but I never equipped them. Oh, that's annoying. Let's see if there's anything to upgrade here. Did we last talk about uh, everything all at once, that new movie that came out with Michelle Yeoh? Uh, no, I don't believe we have. Well, you should, uh, you should definitely watch it. So the proper title is Everything Everywhere All at Once. And so it's about Michelle Yeoh. You, I assume you know who this actress is. I do not know. Uh, so she was uh, the older female lead in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. And I do believe that she has a 
one of the starring roles in the movie uh, Shang Chi. Oh, uh, I know who you're talking about now. Yes. So essentially, uh, I think the trailer better explains it, but but she she gets an a visit or an insight into other dimensions and who she could have been in these other dimensions. And of course, in one of these other dimensions, she's a badass kicking butt. Um, and uh, I don't act since I actually don't haven't seen it. I don't know how it connects to the fact that I guess she has a daughter and uh, a lot of the reviews that I've seen suggest that um, the movie actually deals a lot with uh, the pain that different generations cause to other generations. Not, speaking of which, uh, Turning Red, of course it, it suggests how the older generation ca causes pain into the younger generation, but this actually also shows the reverse uh, in, in different ways. So, so uh, I've heard uh, a lot of my close acquaintances suggest that they've left the, the movie theater crying, um, which generally mm -hmm. is, a, is a good thing. Um, yeah, so uh, it, sounds, uh, it sounds like fun. Uh, it, I, I definitely need to watch it. This sounds interesting, so... I, I, I know I failed to describe what the premise is based on that very weak set of uh, facts. But uh, maybe you should watch the trailer and, and let me know. Again, I haven't actually seen the movie, which is why I failed to properly describe it. Um, but the, 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 there is something there. See, this is why we're not uh, movie reviewers or book reviewers, because I basically had to pull up a synopsis of the book that I read <laughs> to kind of explain what it's about. So I think uh, I think you don't need to worry about it. Yeah, that's fine. We are uh, we are gamers first and foremost. <clears throat> I guess I'm just going to kill rubbish until you get here. I think I'm getting there. What level are you, by the way? Me? I'm a uh, 26. Okay. I'm also 26. 26.5 Okay, you made it Need I do that? Uh, speaking of media, um, you did uh, share with uh, us uh, the newest trailer for the latest World of Warcraft expansion. How uh, how are you thinking about it? Uh, the introduction of a new class race, which I am still. Uh, just a bit curious about uh, Yeah, what are your thoughts? Well uh, As expected of Blizzard the trailer was pretty phenomenal. I enjoyed how the Construct was kind of left there for several years and then he kind of wakes up and he's all sad that his other construct buddies were either destroyed or they haven't woken up. Oh, wait a second. Then, you know, are we on a queue or not? I'm about to cue this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead with your story. Yeah, so it was uh, it was pretty exciting, or pretty pretty enthralling to watch that cinematic. You know, Blizzard is great at cinematics. So. Very very nice. But what is Blizzard's best cinematic, John? Um. Their best cinematic. 
So I'm kind of defaulting to the World of Warcraft ones right now. If I had to just talk purely through nostalgia, it's probably the original World of Warcraft one, because I remember watching that one so many times. And it was just amazing. Um, I guess Wrath of the Lich King was pretty memorable. See, that's what I was waiting for you to say. Wrath of the Lich King. Is that your answer? That is my answer. Okay. We might have to get back to this because it's dungeon time. And I can't okay, do two fine. Things at once. Dungeon time. <clears throat> is this our third dungeon? Yes, I believe so. Still a damage dealer. of that elevator in a uh, squid game the elevator reminds you of the elevator in squid game yeah now this is how you win tug of war did you per did you by any chance watch that uh, mr. beast squid game thing no what what is that do you know who mr. beast is no I don't I thought I almost thought you said Mr. Bean. Yeah, Mr. Beast is uh, this YouTube content creator, pretty popular, and apparently he did a Squid Game recreation with a bunch of like actors. Oh wait, I heard about that. I didn't see it, but I heard about that. Yeah, I can't say I saw it either. Did um, did he actually go into the? Uh elevator thing? Did he focus on the elevator at all? I don't know, I didn't see it, but a lot of people had... It was just, it just had a lot of buzz, so... I was kind of wondering if you'd watch it and maybe you could give me a synopsis of what happened. No, but maybe we should look that up before... Uh, maybe for next time. Yeah, potentially.
But these railroad tracks almost reminds me of the dead mines again. Well, it is a mine, so I would hope some things would remind you of the dead mines. What is this? I don't know, that guy's running away. Maybe he's afraid. What are we supposed to do here? What I'm asking. What are you guys even looking for? Powders? Yeah, I was looking for a fire sand interactable. There we go. That's the boss. It's like a big ugly, ugly bastard. this area of effect uh, place you have to leave yeah but that's the entire arena Maybe it is. well not entirely there was some areas in this thing said this way fox is that what he said in very reassuring tone another boss fight. It's a camp jelly jam jelly. Camp jelly jam.
That sounds watery. Wait a second. Oh, there we go. I didn't realize that we had to drop down. Oh, you weren't with us? Oh, jeez. Are you in trouble? I am in trouble. There you guys are. for the extra ads here. Good thing I had my cooldowns so. up. Everybody's gonna think you're a griefer. So this Arcanist was getting tired of this pallet and and how slow he was going, so he pulled the end, like half of a dungeon room. <clears throat> See? All right. Looks like we made it to what the final boss. Maybe. Not sure. Looks like a classic uh, Final Fantasy Iron Giant. Hey, wait a second. This entire area is covered by the effect. <laughs> what are you supposed to do? Maybe get away from being very close to him. This is the only thing that I can imagine. just pulled me towards him. Yeah, it took less damage when I was further away. I guess we were supposed to actually go inside of his area because there was a non-orange area within him, so. Wow. He still survived.
I wanted to thank them for their efforts. Well, I'm sure that in their hearts they know that we meant well. Well, you did put like five mobs on top of me in addition, so y I think yeah. they knew I didn't have any ill will, but perhaps they doubted you. <sighs> well, so it goes. So it goes. I right, think it's time to go back to old. Let's go to the very nostalgic music. So yes, uh, the World of Warcraft uh, trailer. Um. Hmm. I liked the Warlords of Draenor one a lot. I thought it was really enjoyable. I can't re what what exactly happened in that one again? Was it the one where for some reason they decided to kill off the Lich King, which I didn't like? No, that one was uh, Shadowlands. That okay. one was the last expansion. Well, I didn't like that. <laughs> well, he didn't kill off the Lich King. It was just it was disrespectful. Li That's what that was. The Lich King got his booty handed to by. By Queen one Sylvanas. character, which doesn't make sense. By Queen Sylvanas, who we all know is amazing and great, and you know is just two steps ahead of everyone, even the Lich King. Yeah, fancy why she didn't do that like two expansions ago. <laughs> uh, no, Warlords of Draenor was the trailer where Gromash goes back to the past to when Gul'den and his orcs and the Warsong orcs were being offered the blood of Manoroth before their skin turned green. Oh, yeah. Does that ring a bell? I, I remember that. We'll see. Wait, so we have oh. to go back into the same dungeon? No, we have to leave the party and then we can do the level sync. The level sync is just to do like a little instance by yourself. I guess they're all gonna they're gonna have us do a little combat or something. So then just proceed. Yes. Papa Shan. Is that the tiny character with the beard? Yes. That character doesn't make sense. <coughs> oh no, the obnoxious merchant. You know, what sucks about being level synced is that you don't always have access to your new abilities, so I have like an ability I set up in my hotbar, but I can't use it yet. Well, maybe you should rely on the base skills, uh, John. 
Stop relying on fancy new uh, spells. Yes, you're right. I don't even understand how you're supposed to tackle these uh, large crowds with a caster. I'm sure you have some AoE spell at this point. Sure, those that can be deployed when I'm close to them. Yeah. everyone at point-blank range. Maybe I just had a good amount of HP. Maybe you're just very skilled. Yeah, that's what that was. Oh no, my memories. Ah. Like memories by Kid Cuddy. All refugees are bad, mind you. Some are able to find employment and lead honest lives. Set everyone reasonable ever.
Okay, we got rid of that obnoxious merchant and we've saved the desperate damsel. Did you do this already? Uh, yes. I'm just a couple of seconds ahead. Who is this question, question, question? Ah, of course. The Ayatollah. Alright, so the idea is to speak to somebody that can uh, elucidate on these visions that we've been having. You mean you don't get headaches like that, where you get memories that aren't yours? <clears throat> uh, not recently. Yeah, so uh, going back to that Blizzard uh, trailer, while I like the idea, the premise behind it all, I can't say that I'm a fan of having this uh, dragon-like class be tied to one single, uh, oh sorry, one, this dragon race tried to tied to one class. Seems a little unusual. So is it that the new class can only be done by one race, or is it that that race can only be that one class? This race can only play this one class, and that class can only be played by that one race. Oh, so it's a one-to-one -one relationship. Yeah, and the developer said that it has to do with the way in which that class uh, fights that it needs particular uh, traits from that race to actually perform those things which uh, lore wise it makes sense but it also just makes it severely limited I can understand a class being limited to a race I can't understand a race being limited to a class if that makes sense mm -hmm.
the science of the seventh dawn. Yeah, sounds interesting. Do you want to join them? I don't know. I just want to hang out. Okay. What? After I finished with that quest, I went to pick up my job quest. That's the next thing that I want to do. I do not want to go to the Waking Sands yet. I guess I originally thought going back to the whole WoW thing is that uh, the dragon people could be more classes than just the dragon class. Yeah. But whatever. I guess we'll see how it pans out. I also just don't like the uh, morphology of this dragon class. Fair enough. I mean, you've By the seen. Way, did you... Go ahead. I was simply going to ask you, since you are a Dungeons and Dragons player, if you've seen the uh, the body shades for Dragonborn, which is what I wish this would have been. They're hardier, more uh, stronger-looking uh, fellows. They don't look like snake-like humans with long necks. Well, it would have certainly been interesting if they included more than one body shape to the dragon. The dragon peoples, because I know that... So I guess, classically, the dragonborn kind of look hardy, but... I know that in some of the source material for Dungeons & Dragons stuff, they do include some dragonborn that are, like, you know, skinny and kind of frail looking. Well, that's, uh, that's all that's being offered by World of Warcraft, unfortunately. Kind of an interesting factoid about Dungeons and Dragons that, uh, since I'm up to date on Dungeons and Dragons stuff, um, they actually acquired a platform that was called D&D Beyond, which is a digital platform for, you know, having online, online, online rule books. Uh, you can also have like your character sheet on there. And it's very easy to like import different options into the character sheet. Uh, so uh, it's kind of interesting that uh, Dungeons and Dragons is kind of shifting more towards digital stuff. And it's kind of good because um, I have a couple of books that I'm interested in actually purchasing from them because I do want to support them, but uh, that I was kind of hesitant to buy because I just don't want to have more books in my house. <clears throat> that makes sense. There is something to be said about the... the feeling of uh, physical books, physical media. But uh, largely these days it is more about collector's items that uh, make the cut for me. Everything else can simply be a digital PDF. Mm-hmm. And you can keep it in the palm of your hands like P a PDA. The world is getting smaller. 
Hey, that wouldn't happen to be a reference, would it? Yeah, no, of course not. It's a very profound thing you just said. I am generally a profound person. By the way, did you have a favorite uh, World of Warcraft cinematic? You said Wrath of the Lich King, right? Yeah, Wrath of the Lich King. I mean, there is... It is absolutely perfect. It happens uh, as a monologue by King Theranus is, is being uh, read or is being spoken. It reflects the feeling of a father. Uh, at the outset of his child's life at the same time that child is an adult and undead doing very similar work to what he's speaking of but very much opposing the uh, sentiment of those uh, of that advice well actually if you hear the speech um, Arthas is actually doing absolutely everything that uh, the king the king spoke about is just not in the way that the king intended. Exercising great strength and stirring the hearts of his people. Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess that that's, was a pretty amazing trailer. I guess that's what I meant to say. But it's just also just a solid. The solitude in which it casts you that is just very captivating. Mm -hmm. Speaking about that trailer, did you know that uh, Wrath of the Lich King Classic is coming out? I heard about that actually. Mm -hmm. Is that a highly coveted uh, classic uh, release? Uh, I would imagine so, but I don't really know. I think in my mind that is still peak Warcraft and for very one one very specific reason, and that's because the, none, no part of the world had been rewritten yet. Because once you get into Cataclysm, you do just rewrite some parts of the old world. Mm -hmm. which, yeah, it, which means you can never go back. It's funny you mention that because um, some people are speculating that after Wrath of the Lich King Classic, there's definitely not going to be Cataclysm Classic. Cataclasic. Yeah. Oh, we have a visitor in the chat. Welcome, New Mexico. Great. How are you doing? Were you captivated by by our World of Warcraft conversation? Uh, well, we were simply talking about what the greatest uh, World of Warcraft cinematic uh, opening trailer was. And we were just talking about the Wrath of the Lich King uh, opening. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it was uh, very captivating. Okay, so I just made it to uh, Vesper Bay and uh, level 17, the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. I believe this is close to where I ended with my original first run of this uh, game. Kataru. Well, you said your character was like level 30 something, right? Well, maybe I went a bit farther ahead, but I do remember meeting the Scions of the Scions um, mm -hmm. as one of my last great achievements during that game plan um, run run through. I see.
<clears throat> so John, have you, uh, now that you mentioned it, have you been playing much uh, Dungeons and Dragons recently? Are you, do you still have an ongoing campaign? My, my group has taken a hiatus because um, we, the party unexpectedly died the last time that we played, so. That's unfortunate. Why, why did that come about? Was it Capris from the Dungeon Master? The Capris? Who's Capris? <laughs> Was it just their desire to wipe you all? Oh, I see. Um... Well, the reason why it happened... Actually, wait for a second. Sorry, somebody just traded me a little toy doll, so I needed to say thank you. Um, uh, so yes, uh, the reason why it happened was because, well, I guess it, was, it, it may have been a combination of some of the players were already kind of uh, burnt out on their characters, the DM acknowledging that, and the DM also kind of... I don't know. I I I, I don't want to I don't want to criticize anybody, but but uh, clearly he all the all the people in your party are actively watching this stream right now. Maybe he did drop the ball a little bit on the strength of the encounter uh, because so we did do a no-no. Uh, the party did a no-no where we slept in the dungeon, and typically it's something that we've done before without uh, any any sort of repercussions or any major repercussions but this time around i guess the dm was fed up with our uh, with our silliness so he did a six some some monsters on us and we were all asleep when this was happening so uh, it, it just completely decimated the group and uh, but i mean the, the session ended well because some of the people, like I said, were kind of burnt out with their characters, and so it actually kind of turned the session into re-rolling new characters. So, but wait, does the story continue uh, even though you are re-rolling new characters? Uh, yeah, the kind of the idea is that we will continue in this world in the setting, uh, which is Curse of Strahd, which is in Ravenloft, the campaign setting. And so the idea is to complete the campaign, but just with new characters. And so I guess the reason why we're in a hiatus is because the dungeon master didn't really expect this. So I guess uh, they're kind of figuring out how to tie everything back back together. Clearly, the rerolls have to be uh, the sons of the party that died. The, son, the, sons. <laughs> the sons and daughters of the party that died. They all just happen to. Uh get lucky the day before they went to sleep and uh, uh, that's yeah. that's how you resolve that plot thread problem solved i guess i mean maybe that's something that could happen although i don't think i ever really put in my backstory that my character has children <sighs> Let's go with that. So you are the adventurer of whom I've heard so much. All right, so now we're meeting the Scions. My name is Minthelia, and I lead the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. I have awaited your coming. Please, be at ease. You are among friends here. Among friends. How many scions are there? Last Without time I played this game, I was paired up with a but have patience. fellow Will elf person, but now I'm with a cat lady. First, let I don't me begin know how many there are off the top of my head. Maybe seven? We are the scions of the seventh dawn. Because it is the, the scions of the seventh boundaries. dawn after all. Our single objective is the preservation of the future of Eorzea. Among our gravest concerns are the godlike beings known as the primals. So now we're listening to who the primals are. 
Their existence is a bane upon Eorzea. Nay, the world at large. And we have striven to find a lasting solution to the threat they pose. Our world is home to a number of individuals who, like you, possess a rare and special talent. This talent takes various forms, but one holds particular interest for us. Tell me, have you ever experienced a sudden, inexplicable loss of consciousness? Have you ever experienced a sudden, inexplicable loss of consciousness? Have you ever had the sensation Sounds of like a, from reality? an ad for over-the-counter medicine. Hovering in space, a mind without a body? Yeah, it does. All these things are the manifestations of your talent. Yours is the power to transcend the boundaries of the soul. A power known as the Echo. The Echo allows you to pass through the walls of a man's soul and hear the resonations of his past. You will be there in his memories and see things as he saw them. You may even interact with that which you see. For another blessing, the Echo will enable you to know a man's mind even if you cannot comprehend his words. In short, the Echo is a truly extraordinary power. And this power is strong within you. It is only a shame that we cannot use it whensoever we choose. That's right. I too possess the Echo. With that established, let us return to the subject of the Primals. So long as they exist, the realm cannot take so much as a single step towards true peace. So if I remember correctly, Measures the primals in this game are Measures the summons from previous games. Is that accurate? Race, language, or creed. Yes, to somewhat so, accurate. The scions require the aid of those with Somewhat 100% accurate. Make no mistake. The echo will be instrumental in dealing with well, the Well, I guess threat. as we fight the it, primals, you will see which ones actually come from older games and which ones don't. I know not what it is you desire for yourself. Nor what it was that first brought you to Aeorzea. Like Quetzalcoatl. But I firmly believe that the power we possess was given to us for a purpose. Why else would the gods entrust man with a gift so extraordinary, if not to have him use it? And so I implore you, lend us your power. Well, this lady sure is serious. This person helping Minvili is called the Taru. I wonder if that's a reference to the Taru Taru from Final Fantasy XI. Password is Wild Rose. Pass it on. Hey, if it's a password, that should be secret. Shouldn't be sharing with everybody. Okay, let me delete this uh, stream. I 
I take it you will help us. Wonderful. I knew you wouldn't let us down. But come, I would introduce you to your friends in the Order. Tell me, does the name Charlianne ring any bells? It used to be one of Eorzea's six city-states, and was situated in the northwest of Aldenard. The Charlians were the keepers of wisdom both old and new. Their mastery over magic and ether was unsurpassed, and even the Garlians knew to fear them. Among their number, there were a noble few who devoted their lives to safeguarding the future of Eorzea. When the realm began its descent into chaos, and their countrymen fled for the motherland, they alone chose to remain here. These noble men and women were called the Archons. The Those Archons. same brave souls stand before you now. The masked woman is Ida, and beside her is Popolimo. The two are charged with surveying the Twelveswood. Hello there. Welcome. Okay, my turn to introduce someone. That there is Thancred. Thancred, that's the name of the man. He is our man here in Ulda, Jewel of the Desert. Welcome to the team. If I may, the lovely maiden beside me is named Yastola. Limsa Lominsa has the pleasure of being under her care. Greetings. I have been a Last but not least is Orianger, who presides over all affairs within these halls. Pray seek him out whenever you have questions. Dawn may banish even the darkest night. The words of a dear friend. I'm glad of our meeting. At the Battle of Cartano, our leader was taken from us. But we did not stray from our purpose. We sought out Minfilia and others with her talent, and together established the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Along with the Archons, those blessed with the Echo play a pivotal role in our endeavor to forge a brighter tomorrow for the realm. I should also introduce you to Tataru, our clerk. She ensures that everything runs smoothly. Why, oh, these are a lot of introductions. Pleased to make your acquaintance. In time, I hope you will come to think of us as family. But without further ado, I would assign you your first task. Orianger. Have the documents arrived from the students of Baldessian? Aye, my lady. They arrived but recently. We have received a request for aid from the Immortal Flames. Thancred, would you do the honors? It would be my pleasure. Some days ago, a crystal caravan registered to Amagina and Son's mineral concern was waylaid and divested of its cargo. But there is more. Within a bell of the robbery, several people were reported missing from the shanty town outside the city. At a glance, one would assume the involvement of bandits, kidnappers, and coincidence. Such crimes are hardly uncommon, and the immortal flames deal with their like almost every day. However, this time, we have reason to believe that a primal is involved. Aye. The evidence left behind implicates the Amolja, who are known worshippers of Ifrit. Ah, worshippers of Ifrit. If we then consider the objects that were taken, there is no room left for doubt. The crimes were committed in the name of a primal. That you may better understand the nature of our struggle with the primals, I would have you play the leading role in this investigation. 
You have my thanks. If there is aught you wish to know, I recommend you speak with Thancred. He is well versed in the affairs of Ulda. Ever at your service, dear fellow. Okay, well that was a very long uh, discussion. Did you get through it? Uh, I am doing my job quest right now, so I am not there. Well, uh, I'm afraid that this is probably closing time for me. Mm -hmm. Let me just finish this conversation with Pancreas. Pancreas. Who the heck is Pancreas? A member of the Seventh Scion. The Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Yeah, that's what I said. You said the... I don't even know what you said. <laughs> okay. You call them pancreas. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? It was pretty close when you think about it. Doesn't feel like it. Alright. Well, yes. Uh, I'm back in Western... Vanilland. I think I'm gonna wrap it up here. All right. <clears throat> okay. Cool. Well, uh, thank you very much, John. Uh, that was a very story-heavy session. I want to say. Um, mm -hmm. But I think uh, I think we've made good progress. We got two dungeons under our belt, and uh, I think I think we'll do uh, better next time. Hopefully, uh, maybe we'll both be moving on to uh, the next phase of uh, our classes very soon. Potentially. Cool. Well, uh, all viewers currently watching, thank you very much for sticking around. Uh, join me tomorrow as we go through our retro block. Um, and uh, yeah. Bang a nail, my friends. See you again. Bye, everybody.